Hey guys, welcome to the Celebrity Men Podcast. Here with the one and only Nature Boy, Ric Flair. We were just talking. I like Nate. That's Thank my you. favorite. Thank yeah. you. Nate. What's your favorite? Uh, what is your favorite nickname? I, I guess Nate. Nate. That's almost everybody calls me that. Really? With my close friends, yeah. He's certainly my close friend. <laughs> after <laughs> after touring your place, I want to be your close friend. <laughs> <laughs> you like I want to be your best friend. <laughs> <laughs> You're a big fan of the store? God, it's beautiful. I've never been anything like this. Never. Tell me, tell me what you like about it. Oh, just the the variety of stuff you've collected. I mean, I understand the value of that. It's just something I never had time to do. I, I know it's a novelty. I know it's a, something that people that get into it, it becomes, almost become obsessed with it, right? Yeah, they do. Yeah, I mean, and it, uh, I'm, I'm really impressed by that. Because obviously you have to pay attention to everything. No, you're right. That's the market goes up and down on everything so right. fast. And 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 I love jewelry, in case you haven't noticed. <laughs> <laughs> I got this is my little stuff. I should have brought the big stuff. Got to bring the big guns next time. I will. <laughs> <laughs> so we're super excited. So am I. We're super excited. Trust me. Thank you. I, I, well, how did you select me? That's the main question. My friend and your friend, yeah. <laughs> Ryan, Mr. Fitterman, <laughs> a.k.a. Hugo, around our office. Fitterman Sports. Fitterman Sports, that's Fitterman right. Sports. Fitterman Sports, baby. Um, he painted the picture for me, and it made sense. Yeah. And well, let me say something. I started working here in 2005, 2006 with these guys. And no joke, Maddie, when he was young, he was probably 16, 17 years old. He would come upstairs, and he'd be having a good morning, and he would do the woo. Yeah. Yep. He was he yeah. was always yeah. a big fan, so it Thank just you. made perfect sense. Yeah, it really did. Yeah, at the end of the day, it just made sense. You know, we, 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 went, after, we went after Tyson first, okay? Um, we went to dinner, and we sat there, and we basically hammered out the, the, the framework of the Tyson deal. And immediately we were like, we need, we need, a, we need a couple people. He yeah. said, "What about Ric Flair?" I was like, "Is he available?" He's like, "Yeah, he's available." And I just was like, "Oh my gosh, this is gonna be a freaking smash! Yeah. I think this is gonna be a smash." Thank you so much. I mean, yeah. look, not only, and I'm not, I don't want to sit here and, and, and stroke your ego here, but look, you're one of the most famous, if not the the most famous wrestler to ever grace the ring. I don't know a child that grew up in my city in, in Fort Walton Beach, Florida, Mary Esther, Florida. Are you from there? Yeah, oh, wow, yeah, from the Panhandle. I mean, we did wrestling moves off of every piece of furniture. Yeah. I got kicked out of every single house. We put holes in the wall. <laughs> we broke people's head. Threw him through a wall. Me through a wall. Yeah, from Fort Walton. <laughs> um, a lot of time there. Oh yeah, yeah. The Destin area. Yeah, yeah. we 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 loved growing up there. That yeah. was fun. But wrestling. Well, my moves. wife's got two two homes at Rosemary Beach. Oh, does she really? Talk oh, about yeah. expensive. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> Super expensive. No, no kidding. She had a 3,000-square-foot condo that's worth, uh, she paid like 2.34, it's worth 3.5 now. Right, And this is on, across the street from the water, Luke Bryant, is that his name? Yeah, yeah. yeah the country singer. His house, Big fan. $8 million right here. Bradley Cooper's house, $11 million right here. I mean, it's little wow. little Nashville. Yep. Yeah. It's huh. unbelievable, 38. You know that. Yeah, area, of yeah. course, 38. Yeah. We were doing we were we were eating and going to, and partying on 38 yeah. before anybody yeah, knew about 38. Exactly. No, I I love it. It's it's definitely not a kept secret anymore. Everybody no. and their grandma knows about it no. now. You yeah. can't God, it's so damn expensive. I mean, uh, it's crazy. Well, you better be prepared when you get there. You better be prepared to stay cuz the traffic is gridlocked on oh, both sides. You can't I, I don't go. It's a little bit too quiet for me. She calls my place. I live in Tampa. I live in a fraternity house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Are you married? I am. I've got three kids. Oh, well, you can just leave at home and come visit me for a weekend. <laughs> hey, I'm not. I'm not. I'll come hang out. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. Every time Ryan comes to visit me, it turns out to be an outing. <laughs> Tell us about it. Yeah. That's no, the stories no, we want to hear. Yeah. No, no. Ryan's over there like, shut up. No, no. No, I just, we, we have so damn much fun. Really? Oh, God, we laugh. Every time I go on a trip with him, when New York, our last trip in New York, we, we, we cracked the bartenders, we cracked the bar, we cracked the bank. That's awesome. <laughs> Ryan can drink tequila, you know. He's, <laughs> he's sure not aware of that. It's not, he's not just a milk ultra guy. He'll try to try that. He'll try to pull it on you. Just a, just a beer, please. Then I replace it with a double 42, and he doesn't know the difference. <laughs> <laughs> he drinks double 42 like look, beer, huh? Look at him. Oh, yeah. He can drink a lot. You got some videos? <laughs> <laughs> What's that worth? <laughs> Listen, Ryan doesn't go to bed early either. I got news for you. Shoot, I'm a grandpa. He's a very quiet family guy, but when he gets out there, he, it's hard awesome. to pull the reins back on him. Oh, man, I can't stay up till past 10 o'clock. Yeah. 
Neither can I, but on occasion I have to. There yeah. you go. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Fort Walton, you ought to be going crazy there. Well, no, I so I left in 2000 and moved to Houston and came to this company oh, yeah. in 2000. Oh, okay. So, no, I got out of there as soon as I can. I did a brief stint in Tallahassee and then, um, you know, did some community college and, and ended up just coming to Houston in 2000. I'm sure you've been to Spinnaker. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> What's the other place called? So, uh, Club La Vila. <laughs> Club La Vila. So, yeah. so we're going to have... Um, Spring break. Yeah, <laughs> no doubt. Listen, Jenny McCarthy singled yeah. out. Remember yeah. those days? Yeah, yeah I sure do. Um, <laughs> so funny story. So Candlebox, remember the band Candlebox? Yeah. So they played at Club La Vila and Spinnaker's one spring break. They're actually going to be on our podcast here next month. Oh, cool. So that's going to be kind of a, a yeah. cool... Yeah, I've had some great times at uh, oh, my gosh. Uh, Club La Vila. Jesus. And that place um, was... We, had a, we actually had our last... Uh, Promotion with WCW when Vince bought us at Club La Vila. Oh, really? It was spring break. Oh, wow. Jeez. Jesus. I just had to stay out later that night. <laughs> <laughs> if you went to bed at all. <laughs> I think every time I went to Panama State, I don't think I ever went to sleep. No, it's crazy. <laughs> you can't. I mean, there's just too much going on. Exactly. Oh, yeah. it is. You've been. I've been, a, yeah, I've he been was, a bunch of times. He was 16 or 17 years old. We snuck him into every bar in the city yep. out oh, there sure. back then. <laughs> Yep. He had my fake ID and he had yep. my ID and fake IDs and everything else. Mm -hmm. Those are yeah. some classic tricks. Allegedly. Lost, uh, last time I Allegedly, was there, yeah. <laughs> I lost a Rolex and woke up on my boat at 5 a.m. sweating because I forgot to turn the air conditioning on. <laughs> my Rolex was gone. <laughs> oh <my> <laughs> <laughs> I think my clothes were in the yard. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I didn't look good in that place either. <laughs> Even in my age. We're going to Austin next week. Ryan and I. I heard. Six Street. Woo. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be an experience. Yeah. It, 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 it's been, I've had several experiences on Six <laughs> Street. <laughs> What's your favorite city to party in? Oh, God. Um, well, it used to be Chicago, but, but Chicago is really in a rough time now. Yeah, um, they were having a hard time. And, and Atlanta was obviously great. And they're having a rough time, too. So... My favorite city to party now is either Miami, Tampa, or uh, here, of course. Or I like, I love Tokyo. I'm going to S Sydney next month, Australia. Oh wow. oh, wow. I love that over there. Have you ever been? No, I haven't. You no. guys would love you to take your family there. Really? It's a, but it's a three-week trip. I mean, yeah. it takes 25 hours to get there. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. A couple but, of days. These but days. it's phenomenal. Sydney, hey, mate, everybody's so friendly. You know, you, you land in Australia, and they... Greet you like, hey mate, hey mate, oh welcome here, mate. And you land back in LA and you think you're in, landing in a DMZ, right? <laughs> I mean, it's horrible. It's just, well, we just we've lost it here, but Australia is beautiful. Beautiful, yeah. yeah. New Zealand's beautiful. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That's on the list. New yeah, New Zealand's yeah. on the list for me too. Like yeah. he said, you got to go two or three weeks. You can't just go for a yeah, week. Yeah, it's it's, back. it's it's like I'm going for seven days, but it's a ten day trip. Yeah. Right. That's kind of how the I have to. Jet lag the whole time. Yeah, it's kind of how I do my traveling. Is just cram it in. You know, it's yeah. the the places that you're supposed to take two to three weeks. We yeah. do it in about six. Yeah. You know, and it's rough just, on the body. It is rough on the body, but it's hard to be away from this business for so. I mean, it, yeah. you just yeah. there's you can't miss gaps like that. You no, know what yeah. I mean? You gotta be you on the market constantly. Place, yeah, that's what I'm saying. This is obviously a hands on. It's very hands on. Yeah, like Ryan, I get Ryan to come out, but believe me, everything is buttoned down. At, at the fitter with compound before he comes out. Oh, I bet. So, I mean, he, there ain't a, nothing, there's nothing left to be. What am I trying to say? No, there's there's no there's, there's no way you can go wrong. It's so laid everything out. Everything's yeah. covered. Yeah, yeah everything's yeah, yeah. covered. Yeah. yeah, has to be. Well, when you go and look at just let's take yesterday. So I met you last year um, at the at the Galleria. Yeah. Okay. Um, everything is just laid out. It's neat. It's nice. Everybody oh, knows. Yeah. It's phenomenal. The operation itself. Everybody knows what they're doing. Everybody knows their duty. Everybody knows their yeah, responsibility. Much, much like you, the, the, a lot of people in this family, or they might as well be family. Yeah. yeah. Same people a long time. That's how we found success, honestly, yeah. Yeah. is being able to put your trust to carry out the vision, right? I mean, there's there's obviously a shared vision, and then it's getting it carried out, right? Yeah. Right. And we found success by bringing in people who are family or like family. And have the same goals. Have the same goals, yeah, the same mindset. The same, yeah, work to the same. Yeah. I, I tried for a very long time to try to get things out of people that they just weren't mm -hmm. capable of giving, you know, and that was 
it ruined their my relationship with them and, and their relationship with me, obviously, because, yeah. you know, who is this, who's this asshole who continues to ask me for something that I can't do? Mm-hmm. And trying to push it out of me is not making it work. So we just started doing an unfortunate thing, and that's just having high turnover until we found the right people. Yeah. But once we did find the right people, it's been oh, yeah. on and popping. Yeah. Well, there's things you can train for, and there's things that are ingrained. Of course. You can't train personality and character. There's just certain things, things people are going to be good at and some that yeah. it's just not for them. Right. How does that translate to the wrestling world? You, you, you can't compare it. It's, the wrestling world is a great – if you're on top, you, you're, you're going to make a lot of money, but – it's such an insensitive business. Really? Let me ask you this. Bad. And now with this merger coming along and all that, it's just, you know, I, I have people that are worried about losing their jobs because oh, who's the company they're merging with? It's UFC. UFC. It's the no, Endeavor, I believe. Endeavor, Endeavor yeah. yeah. So Endeavor will take it over, and half the employees at the WWE will be gone. And people are, you know, worried about being on that list. And then, of course, when something like that takes place, they cut to the bottom line, right. you know, for a couple of years until right. they start making money. They want to trim all the fat off. Of course. Yeah. So right now it's a situation where yeah, that's a, everybody's just scrambling. Yeah. I mean, there are certain people that know, <clears throat> that know they're secure in that. But of course. You I retired mean, 15 years ago, correct? I retired in 2008 and then because I got divorced four times and <laughs> Years. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a whole nother podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The singles podcast. We'll, we'll have to yeah. do one of those. I got oh, some war stories for you on that side. Yeah, well. Oh my God. <laughs> Paying alimony to three women at one time was <laughs> cost <laughs> effective. <laughs> so I went back to work for a little while. And then. Well, well, how has it changed? How has the business changed since you retired? Uh, What's the biggest change? Camaraderie. Okay. You know, the guys now are so. Social media just made it impossible for anybody basically to have fun without the bringing up the past. Yeah, or yeah, yeah, we're all with our, yeah. our past. Or they, this happened 20 years ago. I mean, everybody worries about the past because that's all, all the media really wants right now is they just want dirt. Right, that's yep. it. They're still worried to get so, caught out doing something. Oh God forbid! I mean, all, they're always looking at look this poor kid from the Tampa Bay Rays. I know. From the Dominican Wander Franco. Republic, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Franco. The girl was 14. He was 16 years old. But that I've been in San Domingo. I wrestled there 30 times. That's a rough place to be. That's, that's the way they live. Right. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you know. But all these years later, a girl comes along. She wants a Mercedes and 300 grand. If I would advise him, I'd say, just give it to her. You just signed that new big deal. Just signed that, you signed it on yeah, paper. But, and I mean, it's, it's just, that's just one example. It's, just, it's crazy. What but advice I'll, would you give to a young guy coming up in, in the wrestling world right now? Find a guy like Ryan Fitterman to run your career. Yeah, no, I, I, no, I, I agree. Really, he knows enough about the wrestling business. When he doesn't know, Manuel will tell him. <laughs> but no, you need, a, you need a manager. You need a guy, a guy that'll tell you like it is. Because, yeah. you know, we all, when I was young, Nobody could tell me anything. Oh, I, I bought an oil well in Amarillo instead of a piece of land that's worth $40 million. Because Jack Mulligan, my friend, said to me, let's, let's buy oil wells in, in Odessa. Let's really help. Odessa by Amarillo? It <laughs> 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 was 200 grand right there. And we ain't a, not a drop of oil that's come out of those suckers yet. <laughs> 200 grand in 78 is a lot of money. No doubt. As opposed to buying five acres of land. It turned into be one of those MGM, what are they, theaters? Uh, a huge chain. Uh, anyway, it doesn't make a difference. It's just bad investments, bad advice. And we were mo- moving so fast, and just, you know, not paying my taxes on time. I, mean, I could, it's a book, guys. <laughs> I'm writing it. No one's going to believe it. <laughs> I love it. Be surprised. I love it. Yeah. Well, you no, know, you wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> the so girls, if the girls want to leave the room, I'll give you some examples. Ladies, <laughs> <laughs> you'll just we'll have to, you have to edit work. it later. Yeah. 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 Um. But the social media thing is actually it's it's a gift and a curse, right? Yeah. Because I, by far, you are the most popular wrestler. Right. I mean, legend, and it's not even close. I'm one of them. Thank God. But yeah, I'm also, you know, it's. The minute you let, which is, can't happen with you guys because everything you do is so 
calculated and, and you guys are the masters at it. It's, it's it, it, people in my business, and they let people that know nothing about wrestling or anything about them upset them because of comments that they make, you know, on Twitter. Da, da, da. I mean, people that it's, I look at it sometimes and I go, what would this guy even begin to know? But you know, it, it, it affects the young kids. They read it and they go, you know, instead of listening to the people because they can help them get better, right? They read what the fans say. The hell are the fans going to teach them about wrestling? <laughs> right. <laughs> right. It, it's crazy. And, Keyboard and, and, warrior. And, and everybody runs on a on not a real name. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's a handle. It, yeah, it's a yeah. handle. Yeah, a burner account. Yeah. So, anyway, my advice would be to everybody starting out. Period. In in, 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 in like wrestling would be to. Find someone to allow you to help you, remind you how to manage your money, pay your taxes, and just work hard. If you work hard, if you're good, you're going to make it. If you work hard and you still don't make it, it means you're no good. You might think you are, but you're not. Yeah. Because they give you the opportunity. I mean, they've got 100 people at that training center. Wow. At NXT, out of 100 people there, three will make it. Wow. Wow. And they're paying them over 100 grand apiece. Just to go work out in the ring of practice. Wasn't like that in your day, was it? <laughs> when I started wrestling, I was driving on 3,000 miles a week for $50 a night, eating hard-boiled eggs and, and uh, um, what do they call it? Slim Jims. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and drinking beer and trying to hit the signs on the road. <laughs> <laughs> Snap into a Slim Jim. But Texas, right. te- Texas was a great state for wrestling. I bet. Still like, is, but, I think. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, we, we, we love it here. Yeah. They sell all, all the time. Hey, who was the family that was on? I, I don't I don't think it was WCW. I think it was, this Va- is like. Von Erichs. The Von Erichs, yeah. yeah. The Iron Claw. From Dallas. Yeah, yeah, Dallas. I wrestled all of them. So I used to, we used to get that channel in Fort Walton Beach, yeah. right? For for whatever reason, we would get that syndicate. Yeah. And I, I think it was on cable. It was like, you, back then, yeah. uh, WGN was popular. We watched yeah. a lot of wrestling. So my grandfather was the first person to ever show me wrestling on television. I oh, was, really? It had to be six or seven. Yeah. And after that, I was hooked. And that yeah. was the WWF. That was a Gene Oakland, yep. you know, Hogan. Mean Gene, yeah. Yeah, Mean Gene. Yeah. And there was, you know, WrestleMania Rowdy, Rowdy 1, Piper. Rowdy Rowdy Piper, uh, Rowdy. Brutus Barber Beefcake, uh, Junkyard, Junkyard Dog. Dog, my favorite, Ricky Steamboat, Ricky the Dragon yeah. Steamboat. Yeah, he's, he's, he's one of the greatest of all time. I love him. Hacksaw's barely alive, but he's, doing, he's great, too. Yeah. Hulk has had 10 back operations. I mean, it's a nightmare what we do to our bodies. But how, how, how intense is it in the ring? Oh, it's real intense. Really? Yeah. Well, depending on who you're working with. Okay. Are there guys that you would... With me and Steamboat, would... man, we used to beat the crap out of each other. Really? Are there guys you would dread working with because you knew, oh, this is going to be a tough one? Well, when I was world champion, I had to wrestle. We, we, either I would go into a separate territory. Like I would go to Dallas with a territory or San Antonio with a territory or Portland, Oregon with a territory or Florida with the Carolinas or Auckland, New Zealand, Tokyo, Australia, right? All yeah. different promotions, Hawaii. Um, so I would go in, and, and the rule was that either I won or I wrestled their guy for an hour. So I, the wow. first five years I was a champion, I wrestled 330-hour matches a year. Wow. Because wow. They, they don't want their guy to lose. But, but those guys, unfortunately, they weren't prepared to wrestle an hour. It's hard to wrestle an hour. No doubt. That's a lot, yeah. of, that's a so, lot of physical. Yeah. So it was a lot of moving around, a lot of planning. Well, it's a lot just, of, yeah, now they don't know what they're doing. Man, in the 30-minute mark, they're dead. They need to got to, got to drag them around the ring, make them look like they know what they're doing. Yell at the referee, scream at the crowd, anything. <laughs> please please make that. some noise, please. <laughs> yeah. That's great. Do something. <laughs> Take the blade. I'll cut myself again. Say something. <laughs> that was. That's it. That's a start. That's, that's the brother. I cut myself sometimes four times a night. Oh wow! Wow. Yeah. If it was that, if it was that bad a stinker, I'd have, I'd have to get the blood going. Oh God! I've seen guys roll out of the ring and vomit. I mean, God. Just lay down one, two, three. Get it over with. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the promoters didn't want the best guys getting beat, but ultimately, they were so bad. <laughs> they weren't so bad for twenty minutes, right. but when you start going twenty, thirty minutes, you've got to be able to do the same things 
Of course. How many times are you going to put the sleeper hold on a guy? I know. And how, how many, many times are you going to count to two? Uh, and yeah. then the abdominal stretch like that hurts. Uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> it was an Iron Sheik. It had that. It was a yeah. Boston Crab. Oh, uh, yeah. No, Boston wait. Crab. He did the neck, right? Iron no, Sheik. No, the Sheik had the, like, this. Like, yeah, he pulled the neck yeah, back. Yeah, oh, yeah. man. He just passed back. away. Oh, you know, I did see that. Yeah. Recently, no. <laughs> yeah, this year, I mean, if you think about it, Kevin, Tristan, uh, Kevin Nash's son passed away. Arn Anderson's son passed away. The Sheik passed away. Billy Graham passed away. And last week we had Terry Funk, who was absolutely one of my best friends, pass away. And then on Thursday we had a 36-year-old 30, Bray Wyatt passed away. Yeah, he's a big star. That's why I'm going back. Yeah, it's really sad. And if, you, if you're from Texas, that was Blackjack Mulligan. Win, win, his real name was Wyndham Rotundo. His, uh, he, he's Blackjack's grandson. Oh, wow. Yeah, so I'm real close to the family. It was, it was a lot. Do these guys reach out to you for advice? Oh, I, I saw those guys. Yeah, I, I, I broke my my. I actually broke uh, Wyndham's dad up and break him into business. Oh wow! Myself and the Briscoes. But, um, I had a little humor to this. So, when Mike Rotundo first came in, he, he was a two two sport All American at Syracuse, wrestling and football, right? And so when he broke into business, Dick Byers sent him down to Charlotte. Where the Bristol, where the Bristol brothers were, right? It's Jack and Jerry, tough, two tough, real tough guys, right? But they didn't smoke marijuana. <laughs> <laughs> and, and one night, they were driving back from Richmond, three hundred miles, on Highway eighty five, right? And they drove past all nine exits, <laughs> the Charlotte exit, until they got a hundred miles. They broke. They drove into Greenville. In South Carolina, I realized they didn't measure. <laughs> <laughs> now that's smoking some weed. <laughs> well, shit, I, I missed three exits yesterday, and I was sober. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Oh, my God. I saw you on Theo. How was that? <laughs> it was great. I cracked him up. I love that yeah, guy. Yeah, it was great, yeah. And I told him, they put me in rehab. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Yeah. I, I got all this physical, and I got all these tests done and all that, and I Woke up in the morning with a, a, a La Quinta converted into a rehab center, right? <laughs> so I walked outside, <laughs> lit a cigarette, <laughs> and drinking coffee. I look across the courtyard, and I go with my roommate. I go, is that the, the guy looks like the doctor yesterday. He said, he is. I said, what the hell is he doing over there? He said, he's a patient here. I said, the doctor is <laughs> taking care of his patience <laughs> and right after, how many years has he been here five years oh my I said now I know I'm in the wrong place <laughs> absolutely insanity <laughs> then they put you in these rooms where you look at these things and say what does this look like it looks like nothing it looks like a bear it's like, no. and, and I drove this one guy crazy he'd say there's no way that you can be as happy in life as these tests they are <laughs> I said, hey, I'm here for 35 days, pal. Make, make of what you want. <laughs> the day I left, I walked across the street, took that coin they gave me. You know, they give you a coin, you are proud of you, right? And put it down. <laughs> and watch six metal lights. <laughs> right across the street from the rehab center. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm yeah, not laughing because so I condone it. How does an experience like that change you going forward? Does it kind of give you a new lease on life? Oh, God, absolutely. Actually, first of all, for two years, I woke up every day I was afraid I was going to die. Because I was, I was basically dead, 13 days on life support. And then I was so sick that when I, came, when I finally got out of ICU, I had to go to a, a facility to learn how to, re to walk. I couldn't walk. Couldn't even twist off the top of a um, bottle cap, right? Mm. And I'm there for 30 more days, right? And I don't realize that I have a stoma. You know what a stoma is, right? It's with a bag yep. yeah. that's attached to your intestine. Mm -hmm. Right. So finally I get to go home after 65 days, and there's a nurse there. We hired a full-time nurse, right? And I said, what are you doing? She said, I'm changing your bag. I didn't even know I had it when I was in rehab. Wow. I mean, that's how screwed up I was. How do you feel now? How do you feel today? I feel great. You look, you look great. great. Yeah. I don't, <laughs> 
no, 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 I don't hurt anywhere. I'm lucky as, I'm, compared to all my friends. Right. I'm lucky it's going to be. No, you look, it's awesome. Thank I you. didn't want to say that, you know, compared to, to your, your group there. Yeah. But your peer group. Yeah. But you're definitely no, styling I, and profiling I'm above. Trying. Yeah. Okay. Girls, where do you see me in about two months? I'm going to get the hair. Uh oh. In Chicago. Uh-oh. Yeah, me and Brian Erlaker. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that big sign. Erlaker is doing that yeah, there. Yeah. 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 I know him real well. Yeah. I'm going I'm going in for the weave too. Are you really? Uh, hell oh, yeah. Let's go. <laughs> you'll you'll the, think Ringo Starr is there next time you see me. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> We're gonna take a little three minute break, okay? Let's get some waters. When I retired in two thousand eight, I went with my wife, my third wife. Which ended just two years, right? probably because I drove her crazy. I'm not going to. I, I was lost without the locker room, without the camaraderie, without the guys. Fast pace. I was in St. Croix, and I thought, what am I doing in St. Croix? <laughs> God, I want to be in the locker room. I, mean, I, was, right. I just had never, every day of my life, for, what, 39 years. That's your element, right? It is. It was. It's different now, but... It was. I mean, we had, we worked hard, but we had so damn much fun. I mean, you ever think about a return? Maybe one last. No, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> I did it in Nashville last year. Yeah, we had nine thousand people for, uh, for my, what we called my last match, but it didn't go off. But it, it, I, when you're out of the ring for twelve years, nothing. It, it didn't affect me physically. I just timing. It, it, no. It wasn't a timing. I just, I was fixated on weighing 218 pounds. And I got myself in a better shape than I've ever been in. Probably in my life. I I had three months to prepare. So I'm training with John Cena's trainer, Rob McIntyre. Driving all the way to John's every day to drive to work. And one day in the ring, one day weights and uh, conditioning, you know. But I had my, my weight fixated on... Weighing 218, and the night before, of course, I went out drinking, like I always do. <laughs> when you know it. Yeah, and uh, I woke up in the morning, I weighed 222. So at 8 o'clock, I had two egg white bites, and uh, I didn't eat all day long. By the time I went in the ring, I was just dehydrated. And I literally I literally passed out in the ring. Oh, wow. So, and I, what I made the mistake of saying to one of the guys is, I said, I don't feel good. So... They're thinking, oh no, he's gonna have a heart attack. You know, I got a pacemaker or something, and I and they all panicked. So they're all starting to. And I, and I had to figure out a way to get them back in track because they were all worried about something happening to me. So I went like this, uh, like fake I faked like I had a heart attack. So everybody stopped, and then that way they all came to me. I could say, "Slow down, I'm fine. Yeah, let's just keep it going." But um. <laughs> we got a mini version of what would have been a really great match just because I was dehydrated. So Undertaker came in the locker room. Kid Rock is there. They're all worried about me. So <laughs> I drank two bottles of Gatorade to make them all happy. And then I went to uh, Kid Rock's restaurant with his bar called Tootsie's and drank till 4 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> Did it, Ryan? Yes, sir. Hell yeah. <laughs> Ryan don't miss a party. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, I keep hearing you sh- you're at these parties, man. I keep hearing every time he's in a good story, you're always in it. That's right. Yeah. Well, I'm, 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 taking him to, yet, I'm taking him to Kid Rocks again the, next, uh, the 30th of uh, September. And our bar tops look like a CBS. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Only there wasn't any coupons on it, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, um, Hey Rick, we really appreciate you having the, oh, you coming in the studio. Guys. Thank you. Know, you. Oh, thanks thank for you. spending the day with us. Thanks I'm for honored. hanging out. Thanks. Yeah. Man. Really appreciate it. Thanks looking for, let me be part of this. No, looking forward to Comic Con. <laughs> thanks, guys. Yeah. Really o- enjoyed October thirteenth, we roll in the town. Yep. That's right. They're rolling right. on the thirteenth. Get All pumped right. on the fourteenth. We're gonna be on stage and live. All right, here we go. Celebrity Mint Gang. Let's do it. Thanks, man. Yep. Thank, thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, everybody.